In the last video, we got started with uh, creating, automating our infrastructure, um, Azure Databricks infrastructure using uh, the Terraform, which is used uh, used as an infrastructure as a code tool. We uh, automated the entire process, whatever we did manually, and that's uh, the result of the automation. We have got our cluster created. Uh, what we're going to understand in this session is about the notebook notebook is very important um, when you're working on databricks um, azure um, so what a notebook is so we've got our clusters we've got our uh, pools let's go to the workspace and try to understand why notebook is one of the most important piece or one of the most important object in databricks uh, so we go to the shared and then we've got the users at the moment i've got only one user which is myself however um, you could see all of the user accessing your workspaces right over here so underneath the shared you could just create um, a folder structure um, maybe give it a name uh, whatever modules you're using um, code red uh, basic and then I'm gonna create the folder and if I uh, click on the shared one I could just have multiple folders and underneath the folder I can just uh, start creating the notebook um, so if you see over here you've got the notebook library folders uh, ml flow experiment and then you could just clone the notebook as well so uh, give it a name to the notebook code red notebook uh, and you could select the language which could be python scala sql or whatever you're comfortable and the cluster you want to attach your notebook with and that is the reason you created the cluster first because you need to attach your notebook with some sort of instance so that it can whatever data analytics performance you want to make um, it should run on top of some sort of instance and that's going to be the cluster so i'm going to create the notebook and this is how it looks like so notebook is a collection of cells uh, this is what you see is a cell and underneath this cell you could just run any command you could just run something called as uh, spark context um, you could run something called as uh, spark version as well and you could just run your uh, entire Python or Scala application, whatever you are comfortable with. So there are multiple cells and combining these cells makes uh, a single notebook and uh, whatever transformation or ETL process you want to run on top of uh, your Spark cluster, you do it using these notebooks. Cool enough. Um, so let's probably try to run a few of the um, a command so, um, so you could write simple queries could be as range or maybe range equals to you use the spark library and then use the range function and you could just uh, if you just notice that I didn't had to type everything on my own it comes with auto completion as well so I just did it RA and then you could just use the tab functionality and that's gonna auto complete it for you so if you're gonna just uh, do it R tab that's gonna give you entire um, functions available so you have got the range which we're gonna use you've got the read and read strip stream which we are going to use in our next module um, so we're going to use the range and give it a range as probably thousand and then we're going to show the, this range so that's going to be range dot show and I'm going to use it as probably 10 and if you as soon as you hit enter um, so how do you run a spark um, spark query you whenever you're finished running your writing your queries or application you could just use the shift and then enter and that's gonna run your query and what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a spark job and underneath the spark job it's gonna tell you what it has run so if you just view the spark job it's gonna tell you that uh, and it's going to be a DAG visualization because it's going to show you uh, how many executors it launched. Um, if you see that there were there were drivers added, there was zero executors added. So Spark runs on driver and exec uh, and and the execution model where driver sends out the notification or the query to the worker node remember we have got the worker node underneath the cluster driver and worker so driver tells the worker to execute certain task or query and 
whatever executors each worker node has it's going to run all those tasks in this case the task was range and i want to pull out the range of thousand and i just want to only show the 10 range 10 uh, up to the 10 integers of my range and it took almost 44 milliseconds so that's going to give you a, a tag a flow of whatever uh, jobs you're running or whatever spark query you are running uh, i could increase the range uh, uh, limit as well and if i just run it again it's going to give me range up to 100 uh, integer showing only top 100 because that's what i used it right over here you could just use the print uh, command as well my first spark I won't call it a job rather a query and if i just hit enter um it kind of tells you um my first query as an output and if you just notice if you have got the range tells you what id is uh what type of id is it is it is uh, long float or uh, string in this case it is long and that's giving you a result up to 100 so that's how you run a spark query that's how you start writing start building your um, uh, your your spark application um, by running it within a cell and these are collection of cell you could either run them one by one just just typing just clicking shift plus enter or what you could do is you could just use the cell button arrow button you could just run the cell or you could just use the run all above cell so it's going to run all of them together um, and then you could just cut copy or this export the cell also move the cell up and down hide your code and hide results as well so notebook is nothing but collection of cells and all of them can be ran together if you see over here you've got the schedule comments and experiment if you schedule you could just use it as a job and you could um, you could run all of them as a job probably every nightly so one of the example could be you want to make sure that um, certain IOT system or certain servers which you want to pull out logs from so that you could use these jobs so that you could make sure that every night uh, at certain point of time the spark jobs are running and it's pulling out information from your source could be a could be a could be a virtual machine could be an iot server could be an iot device or some sort of automation device so that's how you could just run the spark job um, let me tell you about some of the cool features about these cells and the underlying features so you could just use um, um, the magic command as well um, and use the md syntax and you can just hide start highlighting uh, your notebook that's going to be my first notebook and if you run this it's going to give you the highlighted version uh, of your text so that i, I would rather uh, put this at the uh, top of my notebook so that it's kind of visible right at the top um, so you could just use a cell above it and start writing your MD command so that's specifically helpful when you're kind of documenting your spark um, application my first spark query and then it's gonna uh, highlight it and probably document um, your query type so not only this you could use uh, percentile and uh, run your shell commands or shell script as well so you could just use the ls one of the basic uh, command in um, uh, linux so you could just use the absolute path as well and it's going to give you which all directories um, you have and which all um, folders you've got you could just use the shell command again um, to probably create certain directories using the mkdir command underneath the logs um, and then you cannot create because logs folder doesn't exist so I'm gonna use the logs and now if i just type in sh ls logs it's going to tell me that okay you've got the shan folder as well and you can use the cat command as well to view your logs probably 
so if you want to just view this particular file you could read whatever is running inside your log 4g file so this is how you could just use the um, percentile sh uh, and you could do it you using uh, fs as well um, so that's gonna be for the file system and you could just use the dbutils command that's gonna give you uh, the file system um, all, the, all the file system available within your notebook and that was about the query if you come back over here you could just schedule it um, one of the cool feature about databricks as well why people are using it it calls itself as a unified communication tool within the uh, within your team what does that mean you could just um, use the comment feature just like you could have done it in a documentation so so you could use the comment feature as well so, so that you could just comment out certain um, uh, commands or queries or application part of application and you want to notify your user um, that this particular com uh, the, uh, query is not looking good you could just use the experiment feature and then you've got the revision history wherein you could see whatever uh, changes you're making you could just restore back to a certain version this absolutely reminds me of uh, any sort of collaborative documentation likes so of uh, in 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 Google Cloud, uh, the Google Docs, or or Office 365 documentation as well. Uh, just imagine the code editor has become in such a way that multiple people can work on the same code editor. So, um, same notebook can be used by multiple people, and then you would have a pop up right over here, just like the Google Docs, um, that. Uh, there are other members who are also working on the same notebook and you just uh, verify collaboratively and view their live uh, uh, usage of your notebook uh, and that's really really i find it really cool when it comes to collaboration then uh, we come back right over here we could use the standard feature as well wherein you could choose the notebook theme as well from uh, light to dark um, and then you could just use the uh, unhide your table of content you could just uh, uh, use the hide the line numbers and uh, you could just use only results query to see only the results and then you could just use the side by side uh, feature wherein you have your command running uh, query running right over here and your uh, output is coming here you've got the permission tab and you could edit um, a, a cell as well all right so that was about uh, the notebook um that's going to be very key when we uh, a key part when we start writing a more advanced level um, application in upcoming videos i hope this was informative thank you